Welcome to the David Brown 880 program. I'm Technical Brad. Today's episode, we're going to take a look at the live drive clutch system of the David Brown tractors, specifically the 880 that we have here. This is the 1966 version of the 880. And if you saw our last episode, we took the clutch apart on this thing. We're getting ready to do some more work on that. But we want to take a look at some of the components that make up the live drive clutch system. We're going to take a look at some of the adjustments, both exterior and interior, of the clutch system. Uh, so stick around and let's get into the system itself. Right here. Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about our clutch system here on the David Brown 880A. Now the A stands for a live drive clutch. You get the 880B, it was a non-live drive clutch. And so we're going to explain the difference between the two. They were the same on the 880, the 990, and the 4600. Uh, the 1200 also had live drive and non-live drive, but it was a different clutch system. And the 770 and the 780 had a little bit different clutch system on it. But basically the components of the clutch system are, of course, the flywheel, which we have here. And it is mounted via these four holes here to the crankshaft on these four studs. There's also a locating dowel here. It is mounted on there. It has these three springs that are machined, have a hole machined in there, and then the spring fits into it. What that does is apply pr spring pressure to the separator plate, which we have here. And this is machined on both sides. And what it does, it fits inside the flywheel these springs apply pressure to it to push it out away. You have two friction discs. You have the first one here and the second one. The first one is connected to the cardine shaft. Now this shaft runs all the way through our main drive shaft or our gearbox, through the gearbox, all the way back into the PTO housing. It is hooked into the PTO gearbox via a coupling similar to this that has a bolt through it. If because of that bolt, you cannot remove the cardan shaft from the front. It has to be removed out the back of the vehicle, which requires you to pull the uh, PTO housing off and all that. It also operates the hydraulic pump, which is also in the back there in the PTO housing. Now, the thing about the live drive clutch system is you've got two plates operating two shafts, so they are independent. Now, what happens is you have your flywheel surface on here you have the separator plate between the two and then you have your cover or the pressure plate that is mounted to the back this has springs in it that applies pressure to the plate inside here that forces all of this stuff together so these friction pads are in contact with the separator plate they're in contact with the flywheel surface and they're in contact with the cover plate surface in the back when you apply the clutch pedal, it moves the carrier forward. You have a bearing here, the release bearing. This applies pressure to the front of the plate here, this release pad. There are three release levers that when this is applied, the clutch is applied, it starts to push this down or into the cover. That releases pressure on the first disc. Now we're talking about mm, 60 thousandths movement on this disc, allowing the disc to move backwards and release the pressure for it. So now the gearbox will stop spinning. The same time you're applying the pedal, the band brake, which is here, is clamping down onto the stop drum to stop the gearbox from turning, thus allowing you to put it in gear. As you apply the pedal further, you begin to release the pressure on the front disc. Then it allows it to stop spinning as well so that both shafts now are not spinning and you can apply your PTO system in the back, you can put it in gear. When you release the pedal, everything is crunched back together via the springs and now you're back into drive mode and both discs are turning, both shafts are turning and everything is operating. The advantage to the live drive system is you can stop the vehicle from moving. You can stop the gearbox part of it over here. We stop it from moving 
and then we can change gears. So we can go to a higher gear, lower gear, reverse, or whatever. But you can do that with the PTO still running. So if you had a mower on the back, it's still spinning, right? Um, hydraulic pump is also still running, so you can lift and lower your uh, linkage on the back. You can also, we have an external here to hook an external cylinder up to, so you can still operate the external cylinder. This was very useful back in the day when we would mow hay. We had uh, an old style sickle bar that had a hydraulic cylinder on it that would lift the actual blade up off the ground. So if you came to the end of the row and you had to stop the vehicle from moving, you still had hydraulic capabilities to lift it up off the ground and it was still running, it was still cutting. So that was nice versus the non-live drive to where when you applied the clutch, everything stopped. You stopped the vehicle from moving, you stopped the PTO from turning, and you stopped the hydraulic pump from pumping. So that was the advantage on live drive versus non-live drive. We have a couple of external adjustments on the live drive clutch system. One of them is the pedal free play, as it's called, and that is the movement that the pedal has up and down that is pretty much just free movement. It's not really doing much of anything. Now it is adjusted via a bolt down here below, uh, right here. You can screw this bolt in or out, comes up through here, uh, pushes on this stop here. That's going to adjust this pedal. It's gonna raise it up and down and it loosens when you slacken it all the way out the pedal will actually drop all the way down and that loosens the tension completely off of it but as far as the pedal free play goes uh, you're supposed to have between an inch and an inch and a half and so if we put our ruler up here we're right around the nine and three quarter mark and as we push down on the pedal it goes down to eh, about an about an eight and a half a little over maybe so we, are, we have an inch and a quarter free play. And that's what that movement is right there. Now once you have adjusted the free play, you also want to adjust the clearance here for the brake stop. Now this lever here is what activates the band brake on the inside. And we have an adjustment piece here this linkage is all hooked to the pedal, so we see it moving. You can see it moving here with the pedal. So what you want is a sixteenth of an inch clearance between this stop bolt and the activating lever. Now what I do is I just take a sixteenth inch drill bit and place it in between there. And that's what I have. It'll slide through. And so that's a sixteenth of an inch between that. Now as you see, that's... <laughs> That's kind of sloppy, got a lot of movement to it, so eh, 16th give or take, huh? But that way you've got clearance, and then basically when you're doing your pedal free play, it's just coming in contact with that band brake operating mechanism there. There is a cover plate down here on the bottom right here you will remove that plate to check the adjustment on the three bolts on the cover so as we look at the cross-sectional view of the clutch the part we're talking about is number 35 and 34 so that is the stud and the lock nut that will adjust and what you're adjusting is they call it C here, it's a clearance. So we have, this is our flywheel. This is a friction disc. This is the separator plate. This is another friction disc. And this is the inner plate. The steel parts have the line, diagonal lines through them. And then the friction plates are just kind of colored color dark. And then that's your uh, springs that push the separator plate out away from the inner disc once the pressure is released off of the whole thing. Uh, so that's the one we're talking about and so your measurement is right in here between this plate and this screw uh, So we're looking at our clutch cover system here. We've got this thing all assembled And we have uh, three adjustments on or three points of adjustment on here. We got one here uh, 
one down here and then there's one over here. This is to adjust the inner plate. Uh, they sometimes refer to it as the PTO plate. And you've got a stud that threads in there and then you've got this lock nut that you lock the stud down. So you would loosen the lock nut and you would turn this until you get 70 thousandths clearance. We have a feeler gauge back here. You have a hole here in this plate so you're going to be able to slide your feeler gauge down in there and what you're what you're spacing that out is the inner plate which is inside this is your outer plate here and the inner plate on the inside which is the machine surface that comes in contact with the friction disc you want to have 70 thousandths between these and that inner plate these act basically as a stop so that when you're apply the pedal it comes in here and releases the springs on your release lever releases the pressure of all these springs so that that plate can come back and when it comes back it releases from your friction discs and that allows them to be free from the movement of the plate the uh, inner piece and the flywheel the separator plate and the flywheel which are all machine surfaces that the friction disc will ride on when it's all pressed together and that's what drives the gearbox and you're also your the cardan shaft which operates the hydraulics and the pto gearbox so because the engine's running and all this stuff flywheel the plate the, the separator plate and the outer cover and all that is going to continue to spin so you want your friction disc to release and then that allows your shafts down here to stop spinning uh, so it's set at 70 thousandths, uh, you set all three of them the same, and you do that by loosening the lock nut, putting an Allen wrench on this stud nut here, screwing it in until you get the proper setting, and then while holding the Allen wrench on this, you tighten the nut down to lock it into place. And as we see, we have 70 thousandths. <laughs> I don't have a 70 thousandths, but I have a 32, a 30, and an 8. And that all adds up to 70 thousandths. So that's the distance we're talking about. The clutch band brake system here and how you adjust that. Uh, the first thing, of course, you have to take the cover off as we have here so that you can expose all this and see what you've got. Um, the other thing, of course, you would disconnect on the outside of the housing, the clevis that hooks the brake pedal or the clutch pedal to the operating pedal on this. So we've already got that done too because we have that removed. Um, so what we're gonna do is we wanna make sure, first of all, there's a stud coming from the top of our spring up through the mechanism into this apparatus here, which is called the yoke, and it threads into it. Now we can't see that because it's under our actual end of our band brake here, but you want that stud to be flush with the top of the yoke, which it is, otherwise the pencil wouldn't go through there. So you don't want it threaded up into here because it will come in contact and interfere with the actual band brake. Now once that is achieved, you need to measure your spring length down here. And depending on which manual you go with, the IT manual puts it at 2 inches and 17 30 seconds, uh, the service manual is at 12, 2 inches and 21. I think I saw another one at uh, 23, 30 seconds. So it's kind of all over the map. But I'm setting it at 17. And how I do that is just with the caliper system here. And I can drop it in and measure. Now, I'm including the spring as well as your top piece and your bottom piece down here, the washer type piece that holds it in. All that together comes out to two inches and 1730 seconds. So once you have that established, then you want to measure between your stop, which is this part here, and your apparatus down here, which is part of the mechanism. And so you pull that down and it has to have 70 thousandths clearance. So there again, we got, we got 30, 32, and eight come up to 70. And we're going to slide that in there and then we're going to pull it up and lock it in. Now it's holding it. With that holding it locked in, we go up here to the actual band brake. You should have a little bit of movement in there, which we do. It's just a little loose. So if that was really loose or tight and didn't move at all, you would adjust over here on the other side. Lighting in here. Um, and we just can't see nothing, but there's a stud here that runs through this 
apparatus and then at the bottom of it there's also a couple of nuts there's a, there's a lock nut on here so that you can a jam nut so you can adjust this you can lengthen it or you can shorten it to tighten the band brake and then you would jam, uh, lock the jam nut in on there so that's basically how the band brake system is adjusted and then of course you would remove your feeler gauge and then when you apply it's spring loaded to release so we're we're loose there but then when you would apply the clutch it would tighten up which it has now because i'm operating the lever over here well i hope this video answers some questions about the david brown live drive clutch system or maybe it brought up some more questions uh, speaking of questions, if you have any, please leave them in the comments below. And if you find an interest in this video or any videos, not just mine on my channel, I recommend you look at the comment sections on the videos. Uh, there's been a lot of great conversations I've had on my uh, different videos here, the different projects I've worked on. And a lot of information out there, a lot of really good conversations and comments from a lot of knowledgeable people. Uh, so I appreciate that. I appreciate you tuning into the channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like this uh, video and uh, subscribe to the channel. It'll help us to keep growing and keep putting these videos together.